Welcome, gents. Neil, lovely to see you nice again. Nice to see you, Paul, Craig. Welcome Craig. back to Pier 10. Excellent. What a lovely day. Isn't Sensational it, day. Yes, what fantastic. A beautiful spring day. Come well, on in, gents. Lovely day. What a fantastic cellar door. Beautifully done. Uh, how long has this been open, Craig? So nearly 10 years now, Paul. Um, yeah, lovely little spot down in Shoreham. Uh, this is the owner's old homestead. And uh, now they live down the back of the property okay. uh, down in the vine, so they love it down there. So we're lovely. very lucky to have a, a lovely, gorgeous little cellar door, which is the old homestead. And many rooms. Very, very many rooms. Lots of dining area, lots of tasting space out the front. Yeah, we'll and, get uh, to look at those uh, in a little while, which is fantastic. Beautiful. Pier 10, 10 Shoreham Road. What's that? What's the story behind that? So there's a lovely connection with the Flinders Pier through the family, okay. and part of the uh, Flinders Pier is out the front of the property also. Oh, beautiful. Um, so Pier 10. So yeah. it was originally going to be called Linden Estate, okay. uh, but Pier 10 became our name for, for the winery. And that's that big pillar that you have out the front there that looks quite old and uh, that's right, antiquated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does, yeah. We, we like to have it that the gorgeous sort of rustic sort of country look about it. So Excellent. Yeah. It definitely yeah. does. Definitely. Yeah, look, you've been tempting us here, Craig. I have, yes. So our next wine <laughs> available today is our 2016 Cudablock uh, Chardonnay. So 2016. 16. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, so lovely citrus notes to it, some lovely stone fruit coming through, and a lovely creamy mouthfeel as well. So it's uh, drinking really nicely at the moment. And uh, you get that real butterscotch and caramel notes to it. Um, the full malolactic process uh, is used. And you get that real beautiful mouthfeel, almost butterscotch-like, and uh, drinking beautifully. And we'll drink anywhere out to five to seven years also. So uh, drinking well now, and drinking well with chicken or a lovely bit of mm. roast pork mm. as well. Uh, but a gorgeous little stone fruit based sort of Chardonnay. You can pick up that stone fruit on the nose. You and do. A bit yeah. of mallow that's in there. Mm -hmm. uh, New, uh, new oak in that uh, crate? Yes, yeah, so a 25% new oak. French, uh, of course. French oak, yes. yes. Uh, lovely colour. Beautiful mm. colour, yeah, lovely and vibrant in the glass. Mm. And you get that one and two year old French oak also, which gives it that lovely um, sort of rustic country feel as well to it. So, beautiful Great depth of palate, finishing yes. nice, clean and crisp, yep. but lovely stone fruit characteristics yeah. through the wine. Well done, this is uh, definitely a favourite. Gorgeous Chardonnay, drinking Incredible. well now, Incredible. but will we'll age very well as well. Mm. Very good. Yeah, excellent. So it's been open for 10 years, Craig. Is that true? How long have you been part of it all? Uh, so nearly three and a half years now at Pier 10. Um, I did a little bit of work at Tux Ridge also, okay. which is uh, on Red Hill Road. Yeah. And I was at Merrick's General Wine Store as well. Huh. But my background is uh, Navy and hospitality, and I was a petty officer for just over 15 years. So to do front of house within Navy, mm. to transfer into the wine game was a relatively seamless uh, transition. And I'm, I'm really passionate about wine and passionate about the Moines Peninsula and what we produce. Yeah, having met you down at Cerberus, you were definitely passionate down there. The, uh, the various wine uh, functions that you did down were very well done. Um, and that was an excellent show. So you've just led on to uh, coming to a cellar door and enjoying that very much. That's though. right, yeah. I, I love meeting new people. Mm. I love showcasing our wines that we do. And, uh, and that's, what, that's what it's all about here. It's a lovely sort of homely feel. Family. Yeah, yeah family, family feel, gorgeous wines. We do uh, source some fruit in from uh, regions of Victoria as well, okay. but we predominantly do what we have on the vineyard here, which is about 80% in bottle. Uh, but we do have wines from, from local areas also, and also from the Strathbogie Ranges and uh, in the Heathcote region as well. Heathcote Shiraz and a Heathcote uh, Cabernet. Cabernet Sauvignon, yes. And there is a blend of Cabernet and Shiraz there that Ooh. we haven't released much of yet, but uh, is drinking very nicely. So the, um, the wines you get from Heathcote, the uh, Shiraz and the Cabernet, uh, very smooth, lovely uh, berries and also the plums in the Cabernet. Can you just give us a little bit of background on, on those wines? Yeah, so Andrew Thompson, our winemaker, yes. um, ex Hanging Rock, and had a lovely connection with Colburn Abbott Estate. Mm. Um, came to us in 2005, so 13 years Andrew has been our winemaker and making some fantastic wines. He loves the peninsula, he's as passionate as I am. So it's sort of when we have a few ideas that we're going to bandy around to mm. make a, a new style of wine, yes, yes. Um, he's very um, forward with those, which is great. Mm. And uh, we're very lucky to have some gorgeous Shiraz fruit uh, from the Heathcote region at Colburn Abbott Estate. Mm. And the Cabernet, which is our first year of the Cabernet this year, and, and drinking very nicely for such a young Cabernet as well. 
certainly. We're going to have a bit of a look at those uh, at some stage, but uh, Paul, you've been saving this little... Uh, I have. This, this, uh, this little Chardonnay, as I mentioned before, uh, is one of my favourites on the Mornington Peninsula. Mm. Um, look, it's got some lovely oak, uh, some nice vanilla going through the palate. It is, uh, that, that new oak is there, but it's not overly overwhelmed. Uh, and it's got a great mouthfeel with a lovely uh, crisp finish mm. with a depth of character. It is, it's certainly got a, a, got a finish, it's got some length in it, and yes. uh, you can just keep savouring it. Uh, That's right. Big glass, yep. big uh, big mouthful as well. As, as I said, with a bit of chicken risotto, Ooh. roast pork, mm. absolutely stunning. So beautiful. beautiful, real creaminess to it on the palate. And that's the other thing about Pier 10, which we'll see uh, at the kitchen. Because uh, yes. obviously the matching of the food and the wine is uh, Most a, a, a very important thing and, the, and a big thing that Pier 10 do. So David's the chef. Yes. To, and uh, tell us a little bit about his background and his involvement here. Yeah, so and David's been here uh, for around two and a half years now. Uh, doing a fantastic job, mm -hmm. has changed the menu slightly compared to what we uh, we used to okay. with Pier 10. Um, ex Le Bichon at Balnaring, beautiful we've French. We've all eaten that as well, yes. French yeah. restaurant in Balnaring, yeah. Stefan does a wonderful job. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're very lucky to have David, and he, he does an amazing job, and we'll have a, have a little bit of a look at what he does very shortly. Oh, and of course, the idea of pairing the food with the wine is really important. Too. It is, and um, with my sommelier training through mm -hmm. through the Navy that I was lucky enough to do, professional development, uh, it was one of those things that sort of taught me a little bit more about food mm -hmm. and wine pairing and, and why certain foods go with certain wines and for you know what characteristic is in the wine. And yeah, go on. Having those, uh, that uh, heat at Shiraz and the Cabernet, it just gives you that better breadth of wines to be able to go with some of the foods that, yep. say for example, the subtle Pinots and the Chardonnays and your Rieslings and so on, don't really match too well with the bigger meats. So having that uh, heat at Shiraz and that Cabernet really enables your restaurant to match the food with the wine and uh, obviously bring those palates through collectively. That's exactly right, Paul. What uh, we like to do, because it's all generally cool climate wines down here, yes. mm. so Pinot Grigio, Gris, mm. Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, to have Shiraz and Cabernet to complement those, those right. foods, yeah. I think like beef cheek or a juicy steak or mm. a lovely lamb rack, you need to have something with a bit of depth. Bigger, bolder yeah. wines. And, and a lot of people are still appreciating those heavier mm. wines, mm -hmm. similar to that South Australia sort of Barossa and McLaren Vale. A lot of people expect that of the yeah. Boynton Peninsula, yeah. which is really which is really interesting, and that's part of my job to educate people mm. on the cool climate styles that we Excellent. grow and grow yeah. really yeah, well in the region. Yes, yes. And for those people who want that, the bigger, bolder one, you've got a couple of great ones. Yeah, that's exactly right. So currently we have our 2016 Heathcote Shiraz mm. and our 2017 Cabernet Sauvignon mm. and both are drinking really well and both will drink out to five to seven and maybe maybe out to ten years, which mm. is really exciting. Yeah. Yeah, um, Neil and I happened to uh, come and have a little tasting of those. Uh, not so long ago. Not no. so long ago, right. and well, I was most impressed. Oh, absolutely. Uh, with those, both those wines. And I think both times you mentioned beef cheeks. I'm pretty sure we had a bit of beef cheeks with those two, mm. and uh, with the Shiraz, it just yes. Sits, yes. It, it really yes. opens really it up good. nicely, yes. and. Uh, and glassware is, is also a lovely talking point as well. Yes. Smaller glasses, you might not get that full aromatic of the wine, mm -hmm. but with glasses as, as you do mm. the, the Riddells, um, but drinking beautifully, and it really lets out that lovely uh, freshness and the aromatics in the wine as well. And that's opening up even it it as we sit here, is that, isn't yes. it? No, no, it's getting... You're allowed to have a second sip, Paul, you know. Oh, I am, well, I think <laughs> this is my third. Third sip. <laughs> Very good, well, you gents enjoy. So Neil Paul, welcome to the uh, winemaking facility here at Pier 10. And I'm going to introduce our winemaker, uh, Andrew Thompson. Thank Andrew, you. Paul White. Pleased to meet you, Paul. Yep, Neil Williams. You too, Neil. Thank you. You make a lot of good whites here. We've been enjoying that Couto Chardonnay, and I know there's a whole range of whites. But uh, just on that Couto Chardonnay, I know I've discussed it before. I think that's one of your premium wines. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about that, Andrew. Well, it's, uh, we finished fermenting it in oak barrels. Right. It, uh, it's the oak barrels that we use, probably one and two, maybe three years old. Um, we let it go through Malo if it wants to go through Malo, right. which is where you get the creaminess from. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, it's 
finished fermenting eight barrels, so we've still got the yeast and the lees um, incorporated in the barrel. Using wild yeast or we, what? We use a cultured yeast. Cultured yeah, yeast, We, we yes. buy a yeast, so okay. um, oh, good. that way I, I think got we've control got more control it. over yes. what's going yes. on. Um, so, and I just think it's safer that way. And how, how much uh, oak, do you, how much time in, in oak? It would spend, the coup de chardonnay would spend between probably 12 and 15 months. Okay. So Some it's a fair bit of time, and yeah, look, there would be, what would there be, 20, 20% 20 new, new oak, oak, I suppose. Oh, okay. so, oh, good. Yeah, so we give it a fair mm. bit. We give it, you know, it gives a great structure, great uh, backbone yeah. on it. It has, yeah, 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 A bit of vanilla through there as well. And there is a Excellent. bit of vanilla, yes, yeah. you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Good, well picked up. <laughs> <laughs> so the other whites, perhaps let us know the, the other whites you've got in the range. Well, we've got, on the property, we've got two, effectively two great varieties. We've got Chardonnay and Pinot Gris, or yes. Pinot Grigio. Mm -hmm. So from those two varieties, we make the Cuda, obviously. Mm -hmm. We do make an unwooded Chardonnay, Chardonnay, which is quite simple. It just spends time in stainless steel. Stainless it's, steel. It's basically ready to bottle after after six months. Mm -hmm. It can be that quick. Yes. Um, and the Pinot Gris, mm -hmm. the Pinot Gris grapes, mm -hmm. we have um, the Pinot Grigio, which is, mm -hmm. um, once again, it's a stainless steel, ready after six months or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. And we also do a Pinot Gris, which we put into wood, oh, for wood. similar to the Cuda, yes. mm -hmm. but we use probably two, three and four year old barrels. Um, it also spends time on yeast lees and would be in the barrel for around the 12 months. All right, gentlemen, I'm, uh, I've got a tasting group to look after up in the cellar door, so I'm going to leave Excellent. you to it and I'll see you back in the restaurant very soon. Okay, we'll look forward Thanks to it. Much. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Ray. Ray. So the Pinot Gris, uh, using oak in that, which I think gives it a nice roundness and, and structure to it. Yes. Um, you don't call it a Fumé Blanc, you still stick as a, a Pinot Gris. Um, how do you find that oak? Do you, are you leave it in there for six months? What do you, how long are you leaving that in oak for? Well, it's left in oak for a good 12 months. 12 months, okay. So it's on, on yeast leaves in yes. that oak barrel for 12 months. Um, and hopefully we get a creaminess yes. being imparted from the yeast sure. leaves into the wine, into that wine as well, mm. which gives it that um, point of difference, I suppose. It does. In the Grigio. I think it's excellent, yes. So. And it's old oak you're using? It's um, probably one and two, two year and old. three year old. Okay. Age, yes. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. And there's some other whites that you make. We um, we do make um, other whites. Yeah, you're right. We make um, from the Chardonnay. We've made the unwooded Chardonnay. Right. The Cam Chardonnay. Yes. And obviously the Cuda, which we spoke yes. about. Yes. Yes. And um, we've got a little blended number that's sort of roughly 50-50 Chardonnay, unwooded Chardonnay that is, right. and um, Pinot Grigio. Oh, excellent. A Riesling. Yeah. And we, um, we do source a Riesling, Riesling. from the Strathbogies, Strathbogies, which we don't make here, we get, okay. we get bottled. Oh, you get bottled up there, so it's not place. grapes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so grapes are, yes, that's right. Yeah. Now, I must ask you about the rosé, because rosé yes. is really <laughs> expanding uh, nowadays. It and, is. Uh, very, very, very popular, and you've only just recently uh, released that here. Well, yeah, we, we just bottled, you... bottled the new one uh, yeah, two weeks ago. Right. So, so what, what can you tell us about it? Which grapes and uh, how have you treated it? We, we normally use the, um, the D-clone grapes. Okay. That's a lighter, yep. lighter style yep. of Pinot. Yep. And that is picked roughly around the 12, 12 and a half Beaume. Okay. So very similar time to picking the Grigio. Yeah. We might go and pick a couple of tonne of that. That is then... That'll keep it reasonably dry too, won't it? Yeah, well it does, it does. We, I ferment everything out till dryness. Yeah, yeah good. Um, yeah. That's, I think it's safer that way. Yeah. Um, so then the Pinot is picked, it would be de-stemmed, slightly crushed into the press, left overnight, which is extracting the colour from the skins, yeah, yeah. and then pressed off the next morning and treated just like a white wine. The colour of the rosé that you're producing here, yes. is it that salmon colour or is it a, a pink tinge or what, what are you looking at here? Well we sort of, the colour is pre, not predetermined but it's determined colour by colour. how much ex, um, colour is extracted yeah. from the grapes. Yeah. We, I work with Craig a little bit with that because right. he knows what he wants to sell in so, the cellar yeah, door. Which is important, um, yes. And Try not to extract too much colour at the start because we can always add colour back yes, to it, which is just using the current vintage Pinot yes. um, from barrel. So if we have to add 10%, 5%, mm. excellent, back okay. to um, lift that colour to that, that vibrancy that we want, okay, um, that's what we do. Good, good. Yeah, the day is drifting on, so we're going to start thinking reds in a moment, Andrew. You got 
two Pinots. Yes. You've got a, a special Pinot that uh, we rather like. Yes. And uh, then you've got the two uh, reds from the Heathkit area. So we're going to talk yes. a little bit about those, I think. And and the uh, Sangiovese. Oh, 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 the Sangiovese, yeah, a lovely a wine. I'm yeah, most impressed with Special that wine as well. and local. local. Yes, yes so local. Maybe, well, let's talk about the Sangiovese first, and then we can look at the Pinots after that. Yes. So the Sangiovese, you've got a special little block that you've. Uh, that you get it from on the peninsula? Well, we have access to, yes, a, a, a Balneri. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a vineyard there that's set up with Sangiovese on it, and we've been lucky enough over the last oh, four years, I think mm. now, to, um, to be able to get some, nice. um, a little parcel of that. So, mm -hmm. um, yes, it's um, been quite quite well received. And what's, what's the challenge with Sangiovese compared to the other reds? Well, the Sangiovese, we make all our reds in open fermenters. Right, so there's yeah. no real difference between we make the Sangiovese or the Pinot or the Shrazz or the Cabernet. Yeah, yeah. They're all done in open fermenters. They're all basically just de-stemmed, nothing's yeah. crushed, yeah. and then into the open fermenter. Yeah. The difference would be with the Sangiovese is slightly different oak. Mm -hmm. um, we would use a different yeast to hopefully pick up some more Sangiovese varietal characters. characters yes. And what are some of those characters that the, the average punter out there who hasn't tasted one, what would they be looking for? Well Sangiovese obviously we know is um, an Italian variety, mm, so yes. I think a lot of people would have that in their head to start yeah. with as to what they're going to be looking for. So A little the, bit of that Morella cherry coming through I, and a little bit so, berry yes. characteristics, and, yeah. Yes, I think so, absolutely. A little bit heavier, a deeper and than it, a peanut. It can be and you can at times you can get some even forest floor yes, at times. Yes, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so oh, very good. We might uh, move on to uh, some of those other reds that you've got in barrel there and have a little tasting if that's okay with you. That's fine. This morning I've been emptying some barrels but I've got a barrel here that I haven't finished quite emptying so we can have a look at that and maybe chat about the um, yeah, we'll Shiraz enjoy that and, the, Neil. and the Cabernet. And the Cabernet which I've yeah. actually emptied this week, earlier oh, right, this week, so right. the um, a lot of bottling in the tank happening. somewhere, there will be yeah. a lot of bottling happening, yes. <laughs> Good. Smells like, looks like a Pinot Noir. It is, it's our, um, we've got four blocks of Pinot on the property and at the start of the day, we keep them all separate. Yes. We keep, we keep, um, fill different barrels mm -hmm. with different blocks. Mm -hmm. um, and then when it comes time to blending at the end of the day to make our Pier 10 product and our X-Range product, um, that's when we decide where the barrels go, effectively. So what you're tasting here is one of the barrels that will go into the X-Range Pinot. Got a great nose. Uh, nice, yeah, nice really nice. Predominantly, predominantly MV6 yes. in that. There might be a little bit of decline in there because mm. when that particular block was planted, we thought it was MV6, but apparently there's 15 to 20 percent D2V5 in there as well. Yeah, right. So that we keep that that little block surprise. separate. A little surprise, absolutely. <laughs> Got a lovely flavours on it, just coming straight. Yeah, it's well balanced. Yeah. 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 It is Very well balanced. balanced. Yes. Very good. Yeah. Um, the colour will it darken up, or that's. Um, basically where we're up to now. By the time Craig sells it all, it's not going to change too much at all, the way right. it flies out the door. Yes. Okay. Will it, um, in time, it'll get a little bit darker okay. yes. because you get that, that brown that tinge age, happening. Yes, but yes, yes. as I said, lovely it, and fresh it sells pretty yeah. lovely. A lot, a lot of people will drink it fresh like this. Yeah, and that's, yeah. Yeah. Having that's come from a wine show just recently, uh, this would have done extremely this well. This would have held up. Would have held oh, up. Yeah. Good yeah. to know. Yes. We should enter it next time, is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the National Cool Climate Wine right. Chopper okay. Bathurst, but a lovely wine. This mm. uh, it has got brightness, lovely colour, and a great depth of palate, cool. you know. Thank you. For your entry level. Thank you very much. You'll have to take us now and show us the Heathcote stuff that you've got, the Shiraz and the Cabernet. It'd be very interesting to see how that's going. Yeah, well, I've, um, I've just taken it and put it in tank yesterday, so Beautiful. we can um, have a quick sample of that if you like. Excellent. Thank you. So Andrew, you're going to join us now. We've got a magnificent Shiraz from the Colburn Avenue area. You've got some contact with him. I do. I know the vineyard manager. Um, I, I knew him when he was working on uh, Mount Macedon okay. and when I was at the Hanging Rock Winery mm. back in the 90s. And then Colin moved to Colburn Avenue mm. and helped set up this, um, I think it's 180 acres mm. up That's there big, of yeah. um, Shiraz mm. and Cabernet yeah. and um, the, uh, the other grapes they've got on the property. but. Um, yeah, so I uh, 
to get the grapes down here. We, um, Colin tells me when they're ready to be picked and we send bins up there and bring the bins back here full of um, grapes and we process them here. And how long is it going to be sitting there before we the get tank? to bottle it? Well, we'll be bottling that in, I think, three weeks. Really? So oh. it came out of barrel mm. yesterday. Mm. Um, it'll have to be sort of cleaned up and then it'll be ready to bottle. Mm. Mm. Yeah, very pleasant wine, isn't it? Lovely. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, it's really nicely balanced and not too much tannin in there. It's just uh, light subtle. and balanced, very subtle. subtle. Like it. It is well very balanced. well balanced, yeah. isn't it? Yes. Yeah. You've done a great job on yeah. this as well. Excellent, great wines. We have um, to thank Colin for that because he does supply every year pretty constant, pretty consistent yeah. fruit. Fruit, which is year important, in, year which out, is a base, is, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. your Shiraz and the Cabernet from the same area. Basically, yeah. yeah, exactly, off, yeah. The, off that uh, Colvin Avenue vineyard, yeah. that's right. And we're sitting on the other side of the cellar door now and we're talking to Stuart, who's the restaurant manager. And uh, you know a little bit about the building too, Stuart. I do, well this was uh, our old house growing up. So the old cellar door, yeah? That's right. Yeah. Three young boys, motorbikes and plenty of mischief. Yeah. <laughs> I saw you climb out the window before there. Uh, is that something you've done in the past? Young boys always need to get away quickly uh, <laughs> from, from, from trouble. Um, yeah, so growing up, lots of fond memories of the beach and, and motorbikes down here. Um, but when everybody else was starting to plan out vineyards, the family mm. got involved as well. So as young fellas, I've planted a lot of these vineyards and a lot mm. of these cypress trees. Um, Many, many hours toiling in the vineyard, early days. A which, lot of work. Absolutely. A lot of work. Which sent me away from vineyards completely. <laughs> <laughs> Back up to the city, started yes. into restaurants. Yes. And uh, when, we, uh, when we talked about starting restaurants down here, that was my, my call to come back home, I guess. Right. And, and the restaurant itself here, it, it sits how many people? Look, as you can see, the deck here expands right across, yeah. so we can do small intimate parties inside, of right. 5, 10, 20. Right in the cellar door? In the cellar door, in the main dining room, um, and we can do parties of 150 cocktail parties oh, and weddings and whatnot. So yeah. we're a multi-purpose venue with a lot of little nooks and crannies where we can uh, look after different groups of people. Yeah. I've been here before with the uh, early years, the uh, Peninsula Gourmet Food people, which we've had a couple of functions at your uh, restaurant here, been very good. Thank you, yeah. yeah. Um, I think larger groups and, and, and um, Wine, wine tour companies and those sort of things we work really well together with and we uh, showcase this amazing property mm. and uh, the, the wine you've seen with Tomo and uh, in a moment we'll go and uh, have a look at the food. Yeah. And the cellar door where we met Craig earlier on, that's got some memories for you. Yeah well that was um, originally bedrooms across the front there um, so when I came into the restaurant about 10 years ago mm -hmm. we moved the cellar door in there. Right. So I got moved into the back room. <laughs> right, easier <laughs> access. It was for a little while and that became storage. Yep. So, so I got moved out of there. Again. So eventually your parents do throw you out of home. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so now I've just bought in Arthur's seat. So oh, excellent. Started, started oh, the family yeah. and uh, heavily trenched down in the uh, beautiful peninsula. Fantastic. Perfect. Excellent. The chef we're going to meet in a moment. Yes, Dave Walford. Uh, we actually met at the Beaumaris Hotel in the late 90s. Okay. Early 2000s. Mm. Um, and I actually trained his wife as a waitress. Oh, I know. Um, so they've now moved down to the peninsula as well. A couple of kids. Mm. We've uh, reformed it in the last few years. And uh, he's been heading up the team here at Pier 10 and um, doing a marvellous job. Great chef. Absolutely. Fantastic. Great yeah. chef. We'll yeah. have to show us around the kitchen, Stuart. Let's go and have a look. Yeah. Good. Made arancini with aioli, oh, um, oh. spiced calamari with chipotle mayonnaise, mm -hmm. has some fused olive oil with crumbs and cheese, a little bread. Beautiful, excellent. I've got scallops with uh, hash cured salmon, 
a kohlrabi remoulade, kohlrabi pickle, secure salmon with citrus, and a spring roll with poison. Beautiful. Yeah, Beautiful. David, do you want to sit and join us for a couple of minutes and give us a rundown? Beautiful. So, excellent. So, locally grown produce, some yep, of these, yes? Locally sourced. All locally sourced. So, here we have a beautiful local calamari. Uh, tossed in a bit of spice flour, uh, which you make in house. Uh, it's a great dish, signature dish that we have on all the time. It sells really well. Uh, a little fresh Asa slaw on top and a chipotle mayonnaise underneath. Uh, so, a nice, beautiful arancini with uh, seasonal peas and corn. Makes it nice and fresh. Uh, a little Asian salad on top, just to freshen it again with a bit of aioli. So a little coffee pork shoulder spring roll with a bit of hoisin and a spicy uh, Tennessee style dressing, uh, a bit more on top there, and a little uh, salad underneath to freshen it up. So gents, how did you uh, find the entrees? Oh. Fabulous, liked all four. I my particular favourite one was the little pulled pork spring rolls number, yeah, the fantastic. spring roll. Yeah. Very, very nice. Real surprise. That was great. Nice one. I love the uh, calamari, yeah. but my favourite was definitely those arancini balls. Yeah. Just beautifully the you know the texture inside, and I've made tried to make those before. They are difficult, but they are absolutely lovely. David did a great job. Jay was very modest. He, yeah, he, uh, he does do a fantastic challenge. Oh, they're hard to make. And Many and years of experience in rolling those. And the calamari is a bit of a favourite yeah, it's, it's, here. It became a signature because yeah. we've uh, we've been serving so many versions of calamari for mm. longer than I've been here. It's 12 mm. years. Mm. And, um, Customers keep back home, they love it. Yeah. This one particularly, it's got the right level of spice, the light blend with the salad and the mayonnaise, and um, yeah, we're really proud of it, and people seem to love it. The Absolutely. seafood platter was just that little platter with um, the... Yeah, some scallops and salmon. Yeah, and yeah, salmon. yeah just yeah. a... Nice. Just nice entree, just Absolutely. nice to be yeah. able to so taste. well with the Chardonnay, I mm. thought. Absolutely. Yeah. Which is... Empty now. Empty now, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, both empty. Never mind. Yes. Yes. Now, yes. Now, now, main course is just... I mean, these look absolutely fabulous, but you do have a nice range of main courses. Not only the share plates, but also the mains. Absolutely. So what you did before was what a lot of people do. They pop down, sit on the on the deck on yeah. a nice day, have a couple of things to share. Alternatively, you can do that and then follow on with our main courses. Mm. So a lot of locally produced um, sourced meats. Mm. Uh, today, what we've got for you is our uh, snapper. It's a fillet of snapper done on a... Israeli couscous with clams okay. and a wow. Shiraz reduction. So we've yes. added the red wine in because I know you like the red wine. I love the colours in it. It's oh, just beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. And that Jew. What's just the Jew? So, so basically we uh, use the pork bones, uh, cook them down with your yeah. aromats, yeah. Yeah. add in some red wine obviously. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of chefy techniques in there. Yeah, a bit of oil around the yeah. side yeah. thing. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, finish most of the plates with a little olive oil just to give it a little light touch. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a rich dish. Um, yeah. But still, it's uh, lovely in summer. Crispy skin pork belly with your uh, with your glass of cabernet there. You'll uh, I'm, sit back I'm and relax the rest of your day. Thank in the you. Afternoon. I'm in yeah. heaven. Fabulous, Stuart. Um, and Don't then know where the you got uh, that idea from. Slow, slow <laughs> pork belly. Wow. Um, raised uh, raised red cabbage. Um, burnt onion. Yeah. It's the name of it. We don't actually burn anything. <laughs> and, uh, I love the red wine sauce. Oh. So again, obviously beautiful with your yeah. red wine. Well presented. Yeah, Lovely. Yeah. So you've got a, a range of obviously sometimes have that big rich. Absolutely, beef, beef, cheeky, beef cheeks. They're still yeah. we're slowly winding onto the uh, the steaks now. So yeah. there's some lovely uh, local uh, Gippsland off fillets coming yeah. through, uh, coming into summer. But yeah, slow slow braised meats in winter and uh, lovely fresh. Uh, more salad sort of dishes mm. uh, coming into the summer months. Seems so. <laughs> I have the uh, nice pork here with my red wine. Yes. And you have a nice bit of fish. Yes, and that's <coughs> ideal, I reckon. And Stuart, tell us a bit about this one as well. So again, uh, locally caught uh, snapper. We like to uh, use a couple of different seafoods in a dish. So we yes. use the clams to cook yes. with, with the couscous along with the snapper. So you're getting two different textures of fish on the same plate. Um, Dave's got a real little soft, soft spot for stinging nettles. Oh, oh so yes. Right. The green yes. puree yes, the green. is a, a stinging nettle puree. Healthy for you, Absolutely. I believe. Yes, yes. very yeah. healthy. Um, and again, that um, a bit different, but a Shiraz reduction. Um, basically some uh, emulsion of butter and the red wine a in there. A bit of frothing up there. Absolutely, yes, yeah. yeah. yeah again, that, that. That, chef-y, uh, that chef-y look, but uh, <laughs> allowing you to, uh, again, have the red wine with your, uh, your fish with a slightly richer dish. And this has been breathing. Oh, breathing it has, ready. has it? I think ready. it's ready. We've had it sitting there during the entree. Oh, beautiful. Cheers. Indeed. Enjoy, gents. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
So gentlemen, you enjoyed your lunch? Absolutely fantastic, Stuart. Really good. Entree's great. Love the mains. We shared a bit with those. They were fabulous. Oh, totally enjoyed everything. The afternoon has been excellent here. Highly recommend it to anybody that's down this side of town. Pier 10, worth a visit. Catch up with Craig here, the cheeky boy in the cellar door. Cellar master, fantastic. And a little bit of sparkling red to finish, I think, gents. How does that sound? Cheers. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you, gents. Cheers. Cheers.